Today we're focusing on a Haitian superhero, a powerful mystic from a long line of voodoo practitioners. Today is all about Jericho Drum, sometimes Brother Voodoo, sometimes Doctor Voodoo. Let's talk about him. Thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. While Jericho Drum is born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and becomes Brother Voodoo, that's not where our story starts. Brother Voodoo is a mantle, a legacy title passed down through the centuries. The story starts in the 17th century with a former slave named Laurent. This was at a time when the African slave trade was spreading the diaspora to other continents like the Americas. The people of what's now modern-day Benin and Nigeria were taken to sugar plantations in Saint-Domingue, modern-day Haiti, and they took their religion with them, and when they arrived there, it blended with Spanish and French and Christianity, and the religion evolved to a creolized form of voodoo. The word voodoo itself is derived from the Fon language of Dahomey and means spirit or god when translated. And part of that religion are spirits called Loa, whose identities were borrowed as well from Fon. The Loa are the spirits who connect the living with the supreme god named Bondier, who created the earth and the universe. Jericho grew up immersed in this very thing, though Jericho's parents wanted him to be a lawyer. When Jericho was old enough, he left Haiti and headed to America for 12 years to earn a doctorate in psychology, and while away, Daniel, his brother, became a voodoo priest. But when Daniel was mortally wounded by a fake god pretending to be the snake god Dambala named Zobop, though Zobop turned out to be possessed by the demon Set instead, Jericho went back to Haiti, where it was Daniel at death's doorstep. Jericho reluctantly promised to study voodoo under the Hugan Papa Jambo. Jericho learned how to teleport, how to generate smoke and control fire, and how to appear from the smoke, with distant drums beating as an ominous portent of his arrival. Jericho learned to control flames and even simpler forms of life. Papa Jumbo bound Daniel's spirit to Jericho, which allowed him to contact the spirit of his brother, who can increase his strength and act as a force projection, and can even possess Jericho's friends and foes. Jericho can also detect magic if it's nearby, and he can summon help from the Loa, if the Loa think it in their favor to intervene. Jericho also uses an enchanted talisman which can channel and focus his mystic abilities and even amplify them. And then with his training complete, Papa Jumbo allowed himself to die. Confident, he now found an heir. And now with the new brother Voodoo, Jericho confronted the fake Dumbala and his evil global occult network. When Dabala was defeated, Zobop's servant, Bamboo, swore allegiance to Brother Voodoo. And according to a Fred Hembeck story in Marvel Age Annual 3, Voodoo and Daniel suddenly met a sibling that they never knew they had, a lady called Sister Voodoo, who'd been taken away from the Drum family as a baby and raised by Vanna Black. So the two of them went back to America, where Jericho set up shop in the French Quarter of New Orleans, a focal point for Voodoo on the North American mainland, made famous by people like the real-life Marie Laveau. But it wasn't long before Jericho had to go back to Haiti to fight with Baron Samedi, who'd been working with Advanced Idea Mechanics, AIM, to create zombie derivatives they called Zuvembis. These were enslaved people, not truly dead, enslaved by an AIM device which drained their minds that Baron Samedi wanted to plant on Jericho too, but Brother Voodoo defeated Baron Samedi and returned the Zuvembis to their normal selves, and then he left Haiti and went back to his home in Louisiana. That's when Drum had to help out and save the life of the New Orleans Chief of Police, Samuel Tate's daughter, Laura Lee Tate. Laura Lee was on the hit list of the Black Talent Cult of the Dark Lord. After she crashed into a river, Voodoo saved her and took her back to his house so he and Bamboo could treat her. But before they were done, the cult showed up and took Laura Lee to their altar to make her the bride of the Dark Lord. So Jericho allowed himself to be captured by the cult, and that's how we found Laura Lee. They tied Jericho to an upside-down cross while Mama Limbo tried to drain Laura Lee's blood, but when he escaped, Mama Limbo was crushed by the cross. So Voodoo took Laura Lee to safety and called the police chief, her dad, to come arrest the cult. He then took Laura Lee back to his house and told her his story, that when he learned about some zombies, he left post-haste for Haiti. Jericho then tracked down a Loa named Moondog the Malicious to New York City, and in that adventure, he helped Spider-Man also save the life of an actress named Gail Paris. Jericho then headed to Brazil and South America to help out and re-inspire a vampire hunter named Frank Drake in his battle against Dracula. Jericho then helped out Jack Russell, the werewolf by night, and his assistant Topaz in their battle against a foe named Dr. Glitter Knight. Jericho even shared his brother's spirit with Werewolf by Night to calm his troubled soul. In Marvel 2 and 1 issue 41, Voodoo was at Black Panther's apartment in New York when Fantastic Four's The Thing came in, and together they uncovered a plot by Dr. Spectrum of the Squadron Sinister, who was now King Obatu, and who wanted to use the vampire Zuvembi to kidnap prominent African dignitaries and figureheads. So The Thing and Voodoo went to defeat Obatu and a voodoo priest named Wasuli. Later, Jericho attempted to boost his power by wielding the amulet of Dambala and became possessed by the Dambala itself, and so it was up to Doctor Strange to help free Jericho from the demon's control and trap the demon back within the talisman itself. 
After the contest of champions, Brother Voodoo aided Moon Knight in a battle against Grand Bois, who was another terrorist wanting to raise zombies back in Haiti. And then later, Voodoo was ambushed by agents of Dr. Friday and his cult who drank the zombie cocombre potion. And then captured and brought before their leader, Friday forced Brother Voodoo to drink the potion, and in doing so, Voodoo became a mindless, zombie-like pawn of Friday's. But then, with help from Moon Knight and his assistant Midnight, was able to overcome that control and take down Dr. Friday. And then after Marie Laveau began summoning zombies in Haiti, Jericho teamed up with Dr. Strange, Rintra, Clea, and Morbius to bring them down. It was during this time that Bamboo sacrificed his life in order to save the life of Morgana Blessing. And after Bamboo died, Laura Lee went to Haiti to comfort the grieving Jericho, and that's when the two of them became romantically tied. But she began to realize that Jericho might not truly be in love with her, but with the idea of someone needing him. So with that in mind, she went to leave, but before she could, Jericho used his brother's spirit to make her stay and force her to love him. Almost immediately, he felt guilty for doing that, and so he released her, and he apologized profusely. But despite that, Laura Lee went back to New Orleans to continue on as a nurse. Jericho was racked with guilt over what he had done, and he lost focus, and so to remedy that, he wrote a book called Do You Voodoo? I Do, and went on a promo tour, and it was on that tour when we learned about Sister Voodoo and his nephew, Voodoo Child. Jericho then came to the aid of Daredevil after Calypso had turned the Devil of Hell's Kitchen into a zombie. And then after Ellery Snow was using a zombie named Natmare, Jericho investigated that while having now abandoned his brother Voodoo name. He also was helping Dracula's daughter Lilith, who was trying to control her bloodlust. But in exchange for that, he had her help him fight the Scarecrow. However, in that battle, Lilith's bloodlust got the best of her, and she left Ghost Rider, Voodoo, and Blaze to fight Scarecrow alone. And then Jericho teamed up with Blade to battle against Deacon Frost and Marie Laveau, where he turned the Dumbala against Marie Laveau to bring her down. After that, Jericho began to sense that something was wrong, that the world of the dead and the living were bifurcating, an event whose catalyst was the resurrection of Eric Killmonger. Jericho went to Black Panther and they sent Moon Knight into the realm of the dead to recover the spirit of Black Panther, and they managed to save Black Panther and bring him back to life. In 2004, Doctor Strange recruited Topaz, Satana, and Jennifer Kale to find the tome of Zared Na after a creature called Hellfire was released from within its pages. And when this happened, it was detected by all the most powerful mystics on Earth, Drum included. And then Jericho helped Gambit fight zombies, which were raised from the ground by Antoinette Arsenault, a malevolent sorceress who lived in the bayous of Louisiana. And together they defeated the zombies and laid them back to rest, including one of Gambit's old friends. And in 2006, writer Rick Remender, in his first job with Marvel Comics, wrote a what-if story about Jericho becoming Sorcerer Supreme. That was the same year that Jericho joined S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Supernatural Howling Commandos team. And then during the superhero Civil War, Brother Voodoo registered under the Superhuman Registration Act as a voodoo practitioner, even declining Black Panther's offer of asylum in Wakanda. Jericho helped locate SHRA violators and underground superheroes, and was clocked as one of the only sorcerers registered that could match Doctor Strange, who'd gone underground and joined Captain America's faction. Drum went to Las Vegas to help Moon Knight, Sentry, Miss Marvel, and the Hulk fight Wendigo. After Doctor Strange was done as Sorcerer Supreme, the Eye of Agamotto passed the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme onto Drum, beating out dozens of other potentials for the mantle, and it's then that he went from Brother Voodoo to Doctor Voodoo. Doctor Voodoo headed to New Orleans, where Doctor Strange and some Avengers were fighting with a Dormammu-empowered Parker Robbins, aka The Hood. Drum now wielded the powerful and mystical Staff of Legba, an artifact and weapon only granted to the strongest of Hoongans, and he used this to strike down The Hood. Jericho also helped Deadpool and Headpool open a portal so Headpool could return to his Zombieverse reality. In the Marvel Divas miniseries, Jericho joined Hellcat, Black Cat, Firestar, and Monica Rambeau. This is when Rambeau revealed that she and Jericho were former lovers, and he had kept calling her though they had separated. But she also agreed to help him find the mystical Monkey Pop, and through that adventure, the relationship was renewed. A five-issue limited series called Doctor Voodoo, Avengers of the Supernatural, a drum had to take on an evil Loa who'd possessed a guy in New Orleans, which also brought Doctor Doom into the mix. And then Jericho showed up in the Doom War event, one of countless heroes to battle with Doctor Doom, and then joined them to take on the Chaos King during another event in 2010 called Chaos War. In 2011's New Avengers series, the Vashanti had stripped Agamotto of his power and banished him, so Agamotto went to attack Dr. Voodoo to recover from him the Eye of Agamotto, and in that fight, though he defeated Agamotto, the Eye was destroyed and Jericho Drum died. And he remained dead for four years until Rick Remender and Tom Brevoort decided to resurrect Dr. Voodoo. Dr. Doom had plotted to resurrect Dr. Voodoo to help stop Scarlet Witch from ravaging Latveria as the inversion spell during the Axis event had turned her evil. And with that came Jericho's brother Daniel, who was the one to then possess Scarlet Witch in order to stop the inversion spell and revert everyone back to their normal state. 
It was just after this that Drum joined the rogue-led Unity Division of the Avengers, along with Sabretooth, Scarlet Witch, The Vision, Quicksilver, and Sam Wilson, Captain America. And as a team, they ended up on High Evolutionary's Counter-Earth, though they were there to find and rescue Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who'd been captured by a guy named Low Evolutionary. At the end of that ordeal, Dr. Voodoo assaulted High Evolutionary using all the souls of the people he'd murdered. So High Evolutionary fled, and back on Earth, Drum teamed up with Doctor Strange to stop an evil scientist named Empirical from destroying Masters of Magic and mystical artifacts during an event called Last Days of Magic. And it's during this story that we learn that Dr. Voodoo has a mystical armory in a cemetery in New Orleans, and his armory is hidden within a mausoleum whose name above the door was Ween, a nod to one of his co-creators, Len Ween. Voodoo used the bones of Brother LaFell for a withering spell to fight back against Empirical's Inquisitor and iBots. But Empirical's forces overpowered Drum, and they burned his armory and then seemingly destroyed Dr. Voodoo himself with the eye blasts of Empirical Flame. They thought. What actually happened was Drum swallowed some pin particles to make himself tiny and make them think he'd been disintegrated, and they managed to finally stop Empirical. And then the Unity Division took on Synapse and Human Torch while Wanda, Vision, and Victor Creed stepped down. It was now Rogue, Dr. Voodoo, and old Steve Rogers, Quicksilver, Spider-Man, and Deadpool for a moment. They took up residence in the abandoned Schaefer Theater building, where Drum was talking with spirits who'd still lingered there. They battled the Shredded Man in Boston and his plants and creatures that were taking over the city. Shredded Man killed Quicksilver, so it was up to Dr. Voodoo to save him and bring him back to the living. And with help from Cable and his future antidote, they were able to stop the Shredded Man and save all the Bostonians too. In the Uncanny Avengers Annual, Jericho reunited with another Haitian mystic, Andrade Gestrade, also known as Ghost Dancer, who was part of Steve Rogers' World War II era Department of the Uncanny. And this was so they could all fight against a she-witch from the SS named Hilda Von Haight. After the Squadron Supreme destroyed Atlantis and beheaded Namor, the Uncanny Avengers were commissioned to stop them. Their first stop was Nighthawk, but he called his team and both the Squadron and the Unity Avengers battled, though Nighthawk took Jericho down first to neutralize his magic. Drum went with the Uncanny Avengers into a weird world to find Dane Whitman, the Black Knight, and truly see if the Ebony Blade was corrupting him. And there they had to take on the Black Knight, Spear, and the new Avalon Guard while also dealing with weird creatures in Weird World. Jericho then paired up with Doctor Strange, Magic, and Scarlet Witch to combine their magic enough to move the Jean Grey School to Exhaven inside Limbo to protect mutants from the Empox caused by the Inhumans' Terrigen Clouds. In Uncanny Avengers 7, Daniel summoned Jericho to the swamps of Ogun where he told his brother he wanted to come back to the living. And Jericho said he couldn't, that he'd been dead for too long, but that he could help him finally pass the other way to the spirit realm. This conversation happened while they were investigating both Rucker and hunting for Red Skull to retrieve Professor X's brain. The Unity Squad then infiltrated Pleasant Hill investigating the mysterious Kobic cosmic power source at the root of the town. And in the assault on Pleasant Hill, they flew out with the other heroes for the Battle of Pleasant Hill. After that, they stood against Hank Pym who'd merged with Ultron when he came to Earth, with Dr. Voodoo as the team's teleporter, sending them around with his magic portals. Dr. Voodoo sent Ultron to the swamps of Ogun to deal with the souls of those he'd slew, and he was horrified when he realized that Ultron had committed genocide across untold planets. They sent Ultron in their ship, hurtling into the sun, while Dr. Voodoo teleported the team to safety on Captain Marvel's Alpha Flight space station for the rescue. But then they were captured and put in stasis by Shannon Stillwell and this villain named Regent, who was trying to drain and steal their powers. They managed to break out and capture and imprison Regent. And in the second superhero civil war, Dr. Voodoo was with Strange, Scarlet Witch, Hellstrom, Wiccan, Shaman, and Magic casting spells, and they teamed up to cast the group spell of Dimension Reversal to send a Celestial Destructor back to its own dimension and seal the rift between worlds. And just after War Machine died during that ordeal, Drum was also with Sam Wilson, Storm, Cage, Black Panther, Misty Knight, Nick Fury, and Spectrum at Rhodey's funeral ceremony. Drum was able to communicate with Rhodey's spirit, but it was faint, and he was worried about what was yet to come. And then he had to go to another funeral after Hawkeye killed Bruce Banner. And it was just after this when Jericho was at the bar with no doors, where he saw his brother, who'd now come back to life. And the first thing Daniel did to his shocked brother was stab Jericho in the torso with a dagger, as he was now working with the hand. But Jericho quickly portaled himself back to Avengers headquarters, yelling, Avengers assemble! And he, bloodied and weakened, collapsed to the floor. He told the Avengers that the Hand had stole the body of Bruce Banner and planned to make Banner's body a weapon of mass destruction. Drum used a vial of demon blood to transport the entire team to Japan to take on the Hand right in the streets of Tokyo. And there, Jericho unleashed a karmic bomb on the ninjas, which wiped them all out. And Voodoo and Quicksilver then went to Hashima Island to set up a pentagram doorway trap for the undead Samurai Hulk. He took them to the spirit realm to talk with Bruce, which freed him of the Hand's control and set Banner and the Hulk free. 
Later, Professor Seuss started capturing heroes to force them to battle his own creations, and for that ordeal, Dr. Voodoo was forced to fight Mr. Monkey to no avail. Mr. Monkey managed to defeat Jericho, and Strange then went to see Jericho, Scarlet Witch, and Shaman for help stopping one of his creations named Mr. Misery. And then Jericho headed to New Orleans trying to track down his brother while the rest of the team continued looking for Red Skull. But Red Skull ended up controlling the Avengers' minds with Professor X's brain powers and sent them out to kill. So Wong and Spider-Man ended up having to battle against their friends. And it was Rogue wearing Magneto's helmet who stopped Red Skull and freed Drum and the Avengers from his control. Dr. Voodoo then went to and treated his teammate Deadpool, carrying him on his back out of the mansion. In another story, Merlin called magicians from all around the time stream to help Strange, Kushala, and the Sorcerer's Supreme pierce a mystical barrier and set the childlike Ancient One on his path. And during Secret Empire, Drum and the Unity Squad were trapped inside a Dark Force dome which surrounded all of New York City. And together they held back the Dark Force creatures from destroying the city. And at one point, it became too much and the creatures began to control Dr. Voodoo. And while they controlled his body, Jericho's spirit became displaced, so he temporarily shared Synapse's body with her. And then Rogue flew up and literally ripped the Dark Force parasite from Drum's body, allowing Jericho's soul to return. When Graviton sucked Scarlet Witch into space, Drum called on the spirits of Loa to share their life-giving essence with Wanda to sustain her and give her life and air. Drum was then able to summon the servants of Sidorak to repair Avengers Mansion, which also called Juggernaut, so they had to fight Juggernaut. And in the final issue of Uncanny Avengers, Scarlet Witch and Doctor Voodoo made out and decided to start dating, for he was one of the few who understood both of her sides, both the woman and the witch. And during the No Surrender event, Drum and the Avengers ended up doing battle with the Lethal Legion in New Mexico, with him and his girlfriend Wanda casting spells to hold them at bay, and at the end helped Wanda get ready for Pietro's funeral. And Quicksilver did come back shortly after that. And then after Doctor Strange resurrected Las Vegas in the wake of Secret Empire, it also gave rise to Mephisto and a horrific black spire he called Hotel Inferno. So Wong called Drum, Blade, Moon Knight, Elsa Bloodstone, Iron Fist, Man-Thing, and Ghost Rider to make a new Midnight Suns team, who were also joined by Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider, to fight back against Mephisto and his demonic forces. And then Strange called on Drum again, this time to take on Galactus and his new herald, Dormammu. And in 2019, Drum appeared to Spider-Man, who was trapped fighting Crusher in an Erebus dream spell. Drum showed up again after the fight with Nyx, still with Scarlet Witch, and now at a diner, and then was with her along with Strange, Talisman, Agatha Harkness, and Zelma Stanton at the Sanctum Sanctorum in 2019, testing the building's magical defenses. And in 2020, Jericho paired up with the Avengers again to take on the Katati during the Empire event. He was critical in working with Scarlet Witch to save Kazar, whose soul had become trapped within Black Knight's Ebony Blade. And also in 2020, Drum joined the Punisher, Venom, Wolverine, Elektra, and Conan the Barbarian to Savage Avengers. The hand had attacked and brought Drum before the Sickle Priest, who sliced Jericho's throat to add to the pool in order to summon the Marrow God. So Wolverine cut himself open to give Jericho some mutant healing blood, which revived Drum from death. And then Drum lunged out and stabbed the wizard Kulong Goth right in the chest, though it failed to kill the evil wizard. He beat back the Skinwalkers to protect the Punisher until Venom as a dragon showed up to help defeat the Marrow God and drive Kulan Goth away. Drum hunted Kulan down while the others sought Doctor Strange. And Drum found Kulan and became trapped in his Tomb of the Living. So Goth poisoned Drum and they went to the Spirit Realm and saw Shuma Goroth there. For Kulan Goth was killing Shuma Goroth to drain his power for himself, literally eating Shuma Goroth alive. He dumped Drum's body in a sarcophagus in the City of Sickles with a small Shuma Goroth attached to his face. And he laid there while the rest of the Savage Avengers battled. And it was Doctor Strange's Iron Mage who was able to find and free his body. And he traveled to the swamps of Ogun to bargain with Leg Makalfu for Drum's life. They offered Daniel Drum to Kalfu, and after some hesitation, Elektra stabbed Daniel Drum and returned him to the spirit world, which saved Jericho. Strange then put together a war party which consisted of Conan, Wolverine, Magic, Hellstrom, Black Widow, and Doctor Voodoo to kill Kulangoth permanently. Jericho is also now a professor and headmaster at Doctor Strange's Strange Academy in New Orleans, along with other teachers like Magic, Nico Minoru, Shaman, Wanda, Wanda Maximoff, Damon Hellstrom, and others. Drum spent some time on Wakanda Prime in the Intergalactic Empire of Wakanda to honor the fallen Nakia during this time period, but when he got back, Drum was playing chess when Zoe came in for help with Calvin, who'd been trapped by Gaslamp. And in Death of Doctor Strange, Drum was one of the first magic users to show up at the Sanctum Sanctorum after Strange was killed, but they were too late and Earth's magic barriers fell. So Drum had to go back to Strange Academy and share the news with his students and temporarily shut down the school itself and continues on in his world and in others. Still a professor, still a doctor, still a practitioner, still a hero. So for now, that's a wrap on this one my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.